Hi, and welcome to Meetings and Math. We're here for 6.4, comparing linear and nonlinear functions. Our essential question is, how can you determine if a function is linear or nonlinear? Today, you'll need your Jaguar Jots on section 6.4, a pen or a pencil. You might find a highlighter useful, problem solving skills, and bring your inspiration along with you. Let's get some definitions out of the way. Nonlinear functions do not have a constant rate of change and their graph is not a line. When linear, when I say that, you think of lines. Nonlinear means not lines. So we're going to be looking at some different examples and does the table represent a linear or nonlinear functions? Basically what we're looking at is, do we have a slope? Can I make a slope out of these equations? So the easiest way to do that is to look at the change between the numbers. So between three and four, I added one. And between four and five, I also added one. And between five and six, I again added one. So our delta x is equal to one. So if we're thinking of slope, we know slope is equal to delta y over delta x. And so far, I'm on my way to making a slope that is over one. So now let's look at y. If this works, I'll have a nice delta y. From one to two, I added one. And from two to three, that was an increase of one. And from three to four was also an increase of one. So we have a nice delta y as one as well. And so when I take that, m would be one. So since I have a nice slope, this is lean linear. So it is linear because there is a constant rate of change. And if you remember that when we just say constant rate of change, we mean slope, that is the key. So let's look at the next one. Between two and five is a three, five plus three is eight, and eight plus three is 11. So, so far we have a delta x of three. So it's looking pretty promising. If m is equal to delta y over delta x, we have something of over three. So let's go look at our delta y. Four to seven, that was a three. Seven to 12 is a five. And 12 to 19 is a seven. I can't write a single number down. They're all different, which means I don't have a constant rate of change. I don't have a slope. So this is not linear. I don't know. I don't have a slope. So this is non-linear. So it's non-linear because there is not a constant rate of change. I cannot write a slope. So that's how we do it with a table. Now let's look at one that's really easy. Look at this one right here. Is that a line or is that not a line? That's all I'm asking you. Is it linear or nonlinear? If you look at this, oh, my finger did not make a line. Therefore it is nonlinear because it is not a straight line. Yes, the question is really that easy. Now let's look at this one. This one might be a little bit harder for you to see but it is this part right here that is linear because it is a non-vertical straight line. Now there is a reason I said non-vertical. If the line was to go straight up and down and be vertical, that is not a function. That is just one of those rare cases we have to be careful of. Um, so it's not on here, but let's go ahead and draw a quick sketch. So I'm gonna show you what I mean when I say non-vertical. So there's our x, y axes. Give yourself this as the line we're going to talk about. That there is not a function because it is a vertical line. Vertical lines cannot be a function. So it's nothing to do with linear or nonlinear. Just a reminder that non vertical that vertical lines cannot be a function. Um, a lot of people forget that, and I just kind of want to give us that quick reminder. So let's look at example number three. We're going to classify the equations as linear or nonlinear and provide an explanation. So this is looking just at the equation and then determining what it is. When we have a linear e equation, we're going to use y equals mx plus b, slope intercept form, or y minus y sub one equals m times x minus x sub one point slope form, our linear equation formulas. 
If it's nonlinear, things that we're going to be looking for are exponents or fractions where the denominator is a variable. So those things are, don't look like linear equations. So here we have some examples of equations that we're going to look at. We're going to classify them as either linear or nonlinear and give an explanation. It's usually easier to look at our explanation and then go to either linear or nonlinear. So our very first one is a very classic linear equation, y equals 6x minus 3. It follows the y equals mx plus b form, and there we have a linear equation. The next one that we have, y equals 6x squared minus 3. We only added one little thing that made a difference, but you heard me say it squared. Right there, as soon as I say squared, we know it's nonlinear because the x has been squared. And that right there is the classic, hey, I am no longer linear, I am nonlinear, and it's been squared. So it looks different. So these are the two things that really differentiate linear from nonlinear. So now we look at the next one, and this looks very, very different. It's not something that we're used to looking at. Hey, and it looks different. Y equals 4x and then it has like this little hat. We call it a carrot. Y equals 4x carrot 2. What does that mean? Well, this is what we used to use for typeface when we couldn't easily make a superscript or an exponent. We couldn't make those little things go up to the top to 2. And so we could use this little carrot. It's, we get it by doing shift 6 and it says, hey, I'm supposed to be an exponent even when I can't make an exponent. And so what it does is it makes this 5 equals x squared. And so just like this right here, and it is squared. And it's just another way of us writing squared. So it's also nonlinear. So these are our very classic linear and nonlinear equations and how they can be written. The next two, I'd like you actually to look at yourself and I want you to figure out, are these linear or nonlinear? And I want you to think back to what it is that we know about linear and nonlinear. You might need to rearrange it. You might need to do a little work, but you should be able to get to the correct answer. So y equals 4.7. So if we think about what that actually means, I don't see any exponents, but I also don't see a slope or m, and I don't see a y-intercept or b. But if I think about it, I can actually start thinking about, well, what is happening in that picture? Well, I don't have a slope, so that could be 0. y equals 0x plus 4.7. So it does follow the y equals mx plus b form, so it is linear. In the next one, I see parentheses, and I know parentheses means to multiply. So I can go 7 times x, which is 7x, and 7 times 2, which is 14, and I can get this 7x minus 14, which now is our classic y equals mx plus b. So it actually does work out to what it is that I want it to be. So it is also, in fact, linear. So these are both linear equations, and there are other ways that they can show up. It's still y equals mx plus b, but it's y equals mx plus b with a twist. So these next two right here, these are fractions. And remember, there is something we said about fractions that has a little, mm, some fra times fractions cannot be linear equations, and so they're going to be non-linear equations. So I will tell you right now, one of these are linear and one of these are non-linear. I want you to go back to what we said about non-linear equations when there are fractions and there's something that makes them non-linear. So I want you to think about which one's non-linear and which one's linear. Pause this for a little bit and figure that out. So if you picked this second one as being your nonlinear equation because there is a variable in the denominator, you are correct. The first one is just fine. The first one right here, x over 4, is really 1 fourth x. 1 fourth x, 1 times x would bring the x up to the top for that x over 4. So it would be 1 fourth x plus 0. Our slope is 1 fourth. Our y-intercept is 0. So this is fine. This is y equals mx plus b. It is also linear. The second one is where we have problems. Remember, nonlinear says I cannot have a variable in the denominator. That is a problem. So this is 4 times 1 over x. The x is in the denominator, so this is nonlinear. That is a problem, so we call it nonlinear. Non okay, take a few seconds. I want you to name this one. That's right. You said that the x is squared, therefore this is nonlinear. Congratulations, you guys understand this. Nonlinear and linear are some of my most favorite ones to do because they're pretty straightforward. You usually look at them and you can figure it out pretty quickly. You guys have done awesome on this one. Thank you so much for showing up for linear and nonlinear equations. 
and keep on practicing them if you're not getting them once you do a few more usually people get them pretty quickly linear means line non-linear means not a line and thank you so much again for showing up remember be kind to one another because we can all use some extra kindness in our lives bye for now